Hey everyone, Half Pine here. It's been another week, another episode of Survivor, season 45, episode 10, and we have kind of a lot to talk about. Contradictory to that point, though, uh, we don't have actually a lot to talk about in terms of the post-tribal scene. Not really a lot going on. It seems like the island group gang, fam, is starting to catch their little Doctor Who reference there, but um, catching their stride. They're starting to get through these things a little easier, a little less turmoil. And uh, so I'm just gonna, gonna kind of jump into the pre-challenge like the next morning of, but uh, Kendra was voted out last episode. Julie is a little torn up about it, but that's about it. Emily is definitely taking note of last episode's events and is starting to question whether or not Austin and Drew actually are a stable path for her forward or, or definitely to the end, but maybe even just the next night. Um, but at the same time she doesn't really see below as stable because it's she knows that like they none of them really seem to know how to work with other people or at least work together like these people cannot seem to work together for whatever reason and it sucks like this is a real rock and hard place because i feel like it's emily's best shot um i do think at this point i'm pretty certain that austin and drew are going to get rid of her pretty soon or at least, uh, like, she's not making it past top five. There's no way she makes it past top five with Austin and Drew. I guarantee that. And I'll be surprised if she makes it to five. We have this absolutely crazy moment. I I, I wish I understood the way this man thinks. I, I really do. But uh, Bruce comes up with this idea to lie and say that he was really nervous going into the Kelly vote that someone had knowledge's power. So... Because he didn't want his hidden immunity idol that everyone knows he has at this point um, to get stolen, he gave that idol to Kelly, and then she happened to get voted out, and obviously that was a blind side to him. So he was like, oh no, I lost my immunity idol. And he does the, he comes up with his plan and just says this lie to Katura. No context, he just like tries the lie, I guess. Um, and I don't know, she kind of reacts like she believes him, but... Katura later says she doesn't believe anything he says, which does, I mean, that holds up. Anyway, he immediately after that was like, what'd you think of my acting skills? Which I, I feel like just playing with people's emotional lows and highs like that on an island in general, especially someone, a member of your alliance, this is not a way to pitch an idea or make people feel like you're being honest with them and that they can trust you and they should be working with you. This is reckless behavior. Like, why can't you just be a person about it like just tell me just tell her that like you want to do this plan ask her if it's a good plan don't just lie to her face man oh my god oh, not to mention this is this is this right here is the exact sort of thing that emily was just talking about when she was saying like i just don't feel like below really works together well this is what i mean you know like this is this is not good communication at least not like this is not how i i, I don't even, I, I don't even know but Couture is obviously immediately upset about this. And she's like, why, why would you lie to me like that? And he's like, you think it's a good plan? She's like, no, I don't think that's a good plan. I, I, I don't think it's very believable. And he decides to tell Jake. Anyway, Bruce goes off on his own and he, he tells the lie to Jake that he has no idol. Um, and he's hoping Jake will go tell the Reba members and they can use that as a way to maybe get jake out or at least <clears throat> you know dr like f falsely draw fire to bruce so they can do like a he plays the idol and they just get whoever they want out and in, this made me think of like all the times people have purposely gone out of their way to like make a fake idol for someone to find or um like cause or create a lie that has no purpose other than hurting people or you know kicking someone while they're down and uh not that this is that. This is this is specifically just pushing a lie really hard so you can try and make a play. But typically, I've noticed in Survivor, more often than not, when people try and force something so hard like this, it doesn't work. There are times when it has worked. You know, the fake idol with Bob or in, in Sugar or, you know, with Randy or whatever. Um, but it doesn't... I feel like more often than not, it doesn't work because it's so forced. You know, like, it, it, it just... Life doesn't play out that way. You know, people aren't like cartoonishly gullible 
after this, we get a reward challenge, a separate distinct reward challenge, which maybe that's because we're in the post merge now. And so it kind of makes more sense. But this made me really excited. I really like when the reward challenge is separate from the immunity challenge because I like seeing the impact that like the reward has on immunity challenges, whether it's like sleeping for a night in a nice place or getting some really good food, whatever it is. I like seeing if those players specifically perform a little better, you know, or, or at least thinking about that possibility. And it's not to say that it's not a possibility otherwise, because obviously some players are still getting food and others are not when they go to Sanctuary, even though it happens right after, you know, like that still might affect the next competition, the next challenge. But it's it's easier for my brain to keep it in mind when it happens like this. So I don't know. I like it. It's maybe it's just also more of that classic feel that I like. But yeah. So for, for the reward challenge, you're just um, going over two hurdles under one that's got some ropes in it. They got to grab a ball um, after untying some knots, crawl under this net, heavy net that's like right up against the ground, and then um, use that ball in like that ball maze where they have the strings, that really hard one. Or actually, this one's more of a, a 2D maze, that's right, and they were kind of navigating it through and leaning it. So it's not the super hard one, the snake... You know, that one's really cool. Um, oh, I guess they got rid of all their old puzzles. So, yeah, it's never going to be that one again, is it? Dang. That's sad. Oh, that was a classic challenge. Anyway, so that's that's the challenge. First one to get the, all that done wins. And what they win is uh, a trip to Sanctuary, of course. They get turkey, mashed potatoes and gravy. They get apple pie. They get beer. They get soda. They get juice. They get an overnight stay with a bed. Blankets, pillows, and that's it. And that's basically exactly how Jeff said it. It made this really weird moment where it really seemed like he was going to say something else, and then he just didn't. And then he all of a sudden was just like, "Sound worth it?" And the, even Jake, the way he responded, he was like, uh, uh, "Yeah, yeah, sounds yeah, sounds great." Like even the players, I think, were expecting Jeff to like keep listing stuff. It, I don't know. It, it was just really weird, and I wanted to call that out because it made me chuckle out loud. Like I, I guffawed. Uh, everyone kind of gets through the first sections all right. They're all in the maze, and uh, Emily was one of the last players to get to the maze for like you know actually doing the navigating the ball, and not getting through the holes. And uh, even though she was the last one there, she takes it very slow and steady and wins she emily actually wins the reward challenge which is turns out huge uh for a few reasons one um letters they get family letters uh from home people who go to sanctuary two she gets to choose um three people to come with her to uh sanctuary obviously they string it out and you're like choose one okay choose one more choose one more that way you know no they don't know but it's it's three people total plus emily and um i guess everyone was planning on taking emily because she had been at this point the only person who hadn't been to sanctuary yet so this was like a cool moment where she got to earn it herself as opposed to just being brought there a big part of her survivor journey i think she i don't know i th um, this moment in the edit like really made me question like oh my god is emily the winner like are they editing this to make her the winner don't do that to me don't play my emotions like that i really want emily to win like she's my pick now and if oh i don't know anymore man i don't know this season's actually pretty good i'm i'm invested enough to where i can't tell anymore because things are clouding my judgment like my own biases so that's a good sign in terms of my entertainment levels so anyway she ends up picking uh julie katura and d uh to come with her and what's really powerful about this moment and also kind of sad is when she says katura katura out loud says like really like me i would have never thought it was me and i think that's that like bummed me out that like made me really sad that she felt that way and it made me like even more sad that i like completely understood why she probably feels that way on this island based off her experience you know because she's kind of be on the outside of her little tribe the whole time but at the same time so has emily so I could actually see how Couture and Emily could be really close. And I don't know that they are or aren't specifically, but I feel like they both could have a, like we had similar experiences on the island. I feel like they were both otherized quite a bit. Um, and so it was really nice to see that moment. Cause if, I don't know, maybe this like little sanctuary, it felt like a little bit of a healing thing for both of them. And that was really nice. I really liked that moment. Um, there's also this little moment where Emily's like, oh, it's going to be ladies night right as they're leaving for sanctuary. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh geez, that's going to like set off strategic alarm bells on the boys side since they're staying home and they have nothing but, you know, to be a little grumpy that they don't get food. 
and right after I'm thinking that Austin's like, you know, you know, Emily said girls night. So we, uh, that definitely makes me nervous. All the women being together <laughs> because I, I don't know all women together. They hate man, all man together. They hate woman, bad, bad. <laughs> it's so dumb. They already did that season and it wasn't that good. That was Colton's season, wasn't it? I just remembered that. Oh, that's classic. Going to the reward, uh, it was really cool, actually. Um, everyone tells Emily, you know, that like she underestimates herself too much, and she's actually much more capable than she realizes. It was very much women loving women here, and it was like, I no, oh my God, not women loving women, uh, women supporting women here. I can't believe I said love. It. Anyway, women supporting women here. It was uh pretty hype. Like it was actually like. I don't know. It, it, it felt like good in a non-toxic way. And then um, they get down to, you know, business, obviously. Uh, Couture tells all the girls about Bruce's lie that he's planning to sell, um, which like, yeah, why wouldn't she? She's been trying to get Bruce out this entire season. They've been working against each other the majority of the season. I don't understand why he told her of all people. I feel like for him, it might have just been like, I have this idea. Go. And like, it, like he just jumped on it, um, which I get because like you kind of have to move fast in Survivor, but miscalculation for sure, for sure. Um, so the women take this plan. They're like, okay, so then what we'll just do is we'll vote the majority on Bruce, but then we'll put enough votes on Jake to where if Bruce does play as idol, it'll just hit Jake and we're all good. Um, so that's that's pretty cut and dry. The boys are just like chilling. Uh, everyone starts farting and flexing because the women are gone and I guess they haven't been allowed. They've all been holding in their farts, which is, I don't know, crazy to me. How the stomach aches, the stomach aches. I guess they're not eating that much. I don't know. Either way, 30 days, 30 days. No way, man. I guess you can always just walk away to fart. I don't, for some reason, they were really happy to fart again. And they played like 80s music in this montage. It was actually kind of funny. Bruce then talks to Jake about getting D out, but Jake isn't like super into this idea. Um, so then uh, Jake goes to Drew to tell him about Bruce's idol being removed. So at this point, Jake believes, it seems, that Bruce does not have an idol at this point, or at least he believes it enough to tell Drew and present it as fact. Like he's like, this is the situation. Drew thinks this is amazing. And at first I thought he believed it, but then he went and told Austin about it. And he's like, if it's true, that's huge. Um, which is insane because like he he literally said crazy if true. Chat, crazy, crazy if true. Insane. After this, we got to see the women read their letters from home. And I just wanted to say something really quick about this. Um, I don't know if Couture didn't express this to the producers, if they didn't know about it or what the situation was. We learned that Couture went no contact with her mom like a little over a year ago, and she got a letter from her through the producers, and she really wasn't expecting that. And I I hope she was okay with that. I hope that went okay. But the concept of her no contact being undermined and a direct line of communication being provided to uh to her or to her mother um by the producers, that kind of rubbed me wrong. Um, like that's really messed up. And obviously if they weren't aware of the situation, there's nothing they could have done. And obviously, um, if Couture is fine with the situation, it really ends up being like a no harm, no foul. And Couture is the only person in the situation who can say whether or not something wrong happened here. But I think it was an interesting moment that made me think they need to handle these a little more carefully. Um, cause there actually are kind of a lot of us out here who, um, left not great situations and specifically don't talk to family members in our past because of the way they interact with us and so giving a person like that a line back into your life and especially one like that where it's like on a national stage and they're finding out about it for the first time on national television on an island i don't know um it 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 was just one of those moments where I was like, ooh, I'm I hope I hope this is okay. I hope this is okay. If if everything went fine, that's fine. But I think we should maybe make some rules going forward because that was a close one. If it went fine, if it went fine. So I I don't know. That's all I'll say about that. Uh, now we're in the pre challenge, like immunity challenge portion of the show. Everyone's together on the beach, and Emily lets Drew know that 
the Bruce thing is a lie and they don't have to worry about it. So they're at this point just like, okay, we'll just put the majority on Bruce and we'll take out Jake. They pretty much just adopt um, the plan from Sanctuary straight up. Then Emily kind of wanting to maintain jury positivity for Jake takes a huge risk and tells Jake, hey, if it's not Bruce tonight, it's it's going to be you. Um, and that that's like a pos- potential game blow up uh, because if it gets out that Emily's the one that told Jake that it's going to be him, then at least at, she loses a lot of trust in a lot of people that she's built it up in and goes from being someone who's been kind of playing the middle all right-ish to uh, someone who's absolutely on the bottom and definitely on the way out because it's just an easy pickoff. So like this made me so scared for Emily. Jake is super bummed about this since he's been heavily targeted like the last three episodes. So he he like tries to talk her into talking into voting drew and going drew she says you know i really can't do that because of the position i'm at in the game drew's one of my allies one of my routes so that's not going to work for me which I, I i thought it was super honorable to be that brutally honest with jake uh just like incredibly honest with him i don't know i, I just <sighs> She's also planning to get Drew out at some point, you know, because she is realizing it's not, you can tell she's still like on the fence and weighing these options. So then Jake, for whatever reason, decides to tell Julie of all people about the new situation that's developing, that he's the target, which Julie is one of the spearheaders targeting Jake because she's been narrow-mindedly focused on him ever since she said her name, which is wild. But anyway, yeah, he tells her and she's just like, okay and just walks away just straight up is like i will not engage with you and walks away it's uh, and uh, whatever uh and she goes and tells uh drew you know that he's coming after you so then drew confronts jake and this is the moment that i really wanted to talk about because i get panicking when you hear that your name's coming up or people are targeting you but the way this was handled personally it's a little telling to me um this actually is a moment where i think i will cast some judgment on drew um straight up uh and i know people don't yeah i'll explain when i get there um so drew confronts jake and jake just calls drew on his bs here and it's so amazing because jake's been being targeted the whole time like the past three episodes he's like all right so it's fine if i catch a stray or a few strays here and there but you can't catch one and Drew's like, yeah, exactly. Not hearing the hypocrisy, I guess. And then, um, you know, Jake's like pointing out like this dude thinks like I owe him everything for my spot in the game because he saved me once. And so like, and that's exactly what Drew was saying. He's like, I saved this guy. Now this guy's trying to vote for me. Oh, the audacity, which is like crazy, dude. Like I, literally, like Jake said, you're not a gift from God, dude. Like relax, like straight up relax. And so Drew demands to know who Jake has talked to about getting Drew out because he wants to know who all the people are coming after him. And Jake's like, okay, no, I'm not going to tell you that because why the hell would he do that? Why? Why would he ever do that? In what world, Drew, would he do that? And then because he doesn't do that, Drew wants to get under Jake's skin. He wants to make him mad. He wants to rattle him. And where does his brain go immediately? Ah, stereotypes prejudice stereotypes i don't know like i don't know if jake is italian but he has a boston accent which many people think sounds italian and there is a high italian descent there are, there are many people of italian descent living in that area so he just goes all right mobster with this starts throwing in racially charged you know like statements everywhere and it's just like oh yeah you're the big mobster of the departed oh yeah like have you never heard of a boston accent that's just what people from Boston sound like. Like, do you think, do you think everyone in Boston is in the mafia? Do you think everyone who's Italian or has an Italian sounding accent is in the mafia? I get that no one actually cares when people are prejudiced towards Italians. It's kind of like a meme on the internet, and I get that. I get that. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like, this is this is prejudice. This is someone who got mad at someone, and their first instinct, the first thing they thought to do when they wanted to hurt them was go to racial stereotypes and racially charged language. That's disgusting to me. Like, this was gross. Like, this made me in- uncomfortable. I couldn't believe what I was watching. He-, he even calls him a goon, which is definitely a word that was heavily associated with, like, mobsters and that stuff. Like, 
it's it's like pretty outrageous. If this was happening in a different circumstance to a different person, you know, like if if, if this was like an Asian person, he started throwing out like Asian stereotypes, with just like slightly charged language. We would all be like obviously referring this like referring to this as like a terrible moment, and this is a horrible person who's like openly prejudiced, and that's what this is. Uh, I get that Italians are white people now after white people started counting them because the number was going down or whatever. And now they like count Hispanic people too because the number was going down and that like matters to them or whatever weird stuff is going on over there. I, I get it. But this was gross behavior to me and I, I didn't like it at all. So yeah, Drew walks away all pissed off that he didn't get to find out what he needed to find out and had to find out. And, you know, that just makes Jake a mobster. Uh, bad Italian man make me mad. Definitely a mobster. From there, we go straight into the challenge, the actual challenge of the episode. And uh, it's it's another endurance one where they're lying on like a pretty steep ramp over the water. And there's handholds that they have to hold up on that get progressively smaller as they move down. Last one to fall off wins. I didn't realize this. I don't know if we've gotten any information about this or, and I just maybe forgot about it. Uh, towards the very beginning of the season, but Couture is like really afraid of water. If not water, open water. I'm not sure which one it is or if it's both, but uh, she's very uncomfortable with water. She's noticeably uncomfortable in taking deep breaths. As soon as they get off their little boat and are standing on the docks, she kind of gets an eye of what the challenge is and it's explained to them. Um, then as soon as the challenge starts, she's in like a full on adrenaline rush and trembling and just taking deep breaths and constantly looking at the water and visibly upset. This was like a cool moment because I like Jeff like reassured her. He's like, we have safety swimmers in the water. We have a medical medical boats nearby just kind of hanging out. And if anyone needs to get to you quickly, we will do that. Like you, you will be OK. Um, and then when she says, like, I can't do this anymore. I got to get down. I'm done. He's like he even says, you know, you if you can manage to navigate off the side of that and just step off onto the dock that's totally fine you can just quit that way um you do not have to get in the water as part of the challenge that's not a requirement here which is super nice they were trying to be really accommodating she does do that and goes and sits on the bench and um i was amazed at one that she even tried given how visibly terrified she clearly was like that's insane because i'm terrified of heights and if it would have been a heights thing there have literally been challenges where i've seen them and been like couldn't do that one that's too high and i i would not i absolutely would not that's just the way i am i'm not going to do it i know how i'm going to feel i've felt it many times in my life it is the worst feeling it is the worst panic it takes me a long long time to regulate after that absolutely not so like i couldn't that blew my mind as someone who struggles with similar irrational fear sometimes. Although water, I would say, and heights, I would say, is not super irrational because people drown in water and people fall to their death. Like, it happens. Um, like, heights can kill us. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, so, like, amazing for her. And also, I think Jeff did, like, a pretty good job at, like, trying his best to reassure her and like remind her of like we have safety measures in place you know we're no one's going to let anything happen to you or just like trying to comfort her i think that was really nice um so that was a powerful moment we get down to the final two and it's austin v bruce it's a pretty intense situation ultimately bruce just kind of gave up it seemed to me maybe he had no in the tank but i i personally wonder if it was a calculated move where he was like you know what i if i went three in a row things are going to be intense, like really intense for me, already more intense than they already are, which I don't even know if that's true. Plus I've got my idol. I may as well just drop out, play the idol. I'm good. I think I, I like 30% of me thinks that's what happened here, but maybe he had nothing in the tank and he just gave up. It's really hard to tell. Like I said, uh, last episode or the episode before that Bruce's poker face during challenges, especially endurance ones is insane. The guy looks unbothered most of the time. It's incredible. Austin also did a pretty good job during this one. Um, like, they both had moments, obviously, where they were adjusting or whatever. But, like, when they're just sitting there while everyone else is, like, squirming a little the whole time, they're just, like, stone-cold Steve Austin. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. There was a... Uh, oh, so, yeah, Austin wins it overall. He gets immunity. Bruce does not have it. And there's a really nice moment after the challenge where they give Couture the option, like, you don't have to swim to the boat if you don't want to. Uh, we can bring the boat up to you, but if you want, you can swim with your entire tribe. They can kind of take their time and encourage you. It'll be a cool moment. And they do take that moment. She does get in the water. It's like a really nice moment. I love like moments like this. Keep me coming back to survivor. When, when everyone goes out of their way to encourage 
a player that's struggling they kind of like take a moment out of the game everyone turns off the competition and i, I saw everyone do that i i heard everyone speaking up to try and encourage couture when she was struggling during the challenge and i that does speak to some level about the type of people that are in this game currently like they they are people who are willing to set everything aside and make sure a human's doing okay when they're noticeably not and i think i don't know i those are beautiful moments i like seeing those moments in the show i love seeing those moments in real life and i think we would all be a lot better off if they happened a little more so yeah that was cool now we're in the pre-tribal scramble bruce plans to play his idol and write jake's name down so he is planning to go for jake which is a pretty solid bet i mean a lot of people it seems to be bruce or jake at this point that's that's what it's kind of looking like um julie is definitely on board with this because she's still holding a grudge against jake which is super ironic because at the very beginning of this episode she had like this super emotional moment with drew where she was just saying i feel so guilty for that kendra vote and i feel so guilty for the last couple of votes you know i just the idea of people not liking me is just really tearing me up inside and I'm, I'm having such a hard time so she's so worried about people holding grudges and she's holding a grudge for someone writing her name down which is the exact thing she's terrified might be happening to her like yeah no wonder why you're scared of it and drew i will say during this moment he actually showed that he felt the same way and even though like obviously he's able to see this as just a game because he's playing it like just a game emotions turn the dial is turned down a little lower but um he did show that like you know no matter what happens julie if you mess me over you know things are gonna get messy and if you if you get one over on me and you vote me out we're good no matter what we're good and that was cool of, of drew i actually went into this episode thinking wow drew that was awesome and then like he got mad at someone and started dropping racially charged comments as much as possible which was just freaking weird dude like don't be such a freak oh my god couture comes to emily and is like hey I, I know everyone's talking about Jake, Bruce, that's cool or whatever, but we really need to start thinking about getting Mama J out. Like, Julie, we literally call her Mama. Everyone loves her. She's a very sweet person, and she's kind of been taking care of everyone. She's gonna win. Like, we all love her. I would like to vote for her if she was in the final, you know? And uh, Emily is like, that's a really good point. That's certainly true. Absolutely. So how about we put majority on Bruce and deflect to Julie? That could be the plan. And so they're kind of working that angle. We don't really know what's going to happen at this point. It's that classic, oh, what about this third plan in Survivor? So we'll see. Emily then still trying to maintain that, like, go, like, have the person get voted out. You know, basically, she wants to everyone on the jury to like her. So she goes to Bruce and tells him, you know, Julie's planning to get you out. You know, we kind of got to go. She's She doesn't say it, but she's like, Julie's planning to get you out. And, uh if she doesn't do it now she's gonna do it right after we get jake out um and then bruce is like okay then i guess we'll have to take out julie um and i, I think this was the best early this season i literally said bruce is more likely to go along with plans if they're his idea this is a perfect like emily guided him to the conclusion that she had already come to herself and committed to she was already planning on getting out julie but she didn't tell bruce let's get out julie because she knew that wouldn't work with bruce because she's really smart so she presented the information to bruce knowing that he's equally or he's definitely smart enough to look at that situation and say okay then i have to go for julie because most people would be um like it's and bruce is also really smart like he's been playing the game pretty well <laughs> at least not that bad so like yeah, he was like, all right, then let's get Julie out. I can definitely let go of a ally if they're not actually an ally. And so it's it's much more of a cohesive idea that's more likely to happen because he doesn't feel like yanked along into a plan. You know what I mean? Um, he doesn't feel like he's being led along. I don't know. I This was a really smart move by Emily. This is why Emily should win. Emily's the best. I hope she gets it. Um, Emily's also doing this because she's trying to create a situation where Bruce might not play as idol because it would be really ideal if they could get Bruce out, which is super unlikely. Um, but there, the, she she thinks if she can get him in a state of, we're definitely getting Julie out, then he won't even play as idol because he'll be so sure of what's going on. Long shot, but freaking huge if true. You know, like if she pulls that off, that is massive. And that would be her move alone, really. Or at least you could very much make the argument so. So then Bruce tells Jake about Julie and uh, tries to get him. He's like, we got to go Julie because Julie's trying to get me and he's trying to get numbers for the vote, right? Well, Jake right here then asks because he wasn't sure, I guess, it turns out, or at least wasn't sure enough. To, he wanted to know for sure. So he said, so Bruce, do you still have an idol? And then Bruce immediately is like, yeah, I still have the idol. Like, it's not going to be a big deal. 
like 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 that you didn't just lie to his face this morning or like yesterday i don't know when and obviously now jake after having it confirmed that someone lied to his face not just once not but twice but several times you know like He's been getting the run around for like three days. He's like, why Why would I trust you about this Julie thing? You literally just told me you lied to my face this morning and I wasn't sure. And now I can't be sure now. Uh, so I, I, another miscalculation on Bruce's end. I don't know. Maybe they're really hungry. I mean, we are several days into this point. So like that can, everyone could be just miscalculating a little right now. <laughs> There's another really nice moment where Jake's frustrated and just feeling really down on himself because he's dissatisfied with his performance and he feels like he's letting too many obvious things get by him but again could be hungry could be tired um could just not be as good at reading people as you thought also these are strangers to you but whatever he's having a really hard time and both Katura and bruce notice that and they try and cheer him up they take a moment they set the competition aside even if just for a second and they they just extend some olive branches just try and like keep this person going like hey man it's not that bad and then even bruce is like you're just hitting your wall man you made it further than me i hit my wall three days ago and he did um and he's like and you're hitting your wall now and in a few days you're gonna look back and say that only made me stronger and that was awesome so just another moment i loved these are great moments on survivor now we're going to tribal and in tribal we it, I don't know this this felt like a weird tribal um to me it just felt like it happened really fast and like nothing was really grabbing my attention in terms of what they were talking about it's like it's at this point in the season where you can tell everyone's used to tribal they're getting really good at talking in ways that are less likely to stir up drama and whisper sessions and yeah I don't know it's it's tougher so Emily does like a pretty good job just kind of highlighting the Mama J threat and just saying like, hey, we got this person that everyone loves. I mean, we literally call her Mama J and it's smart, definitely smart, um, but she does it in a way that doesn't seem too direct or trying to say like, this is a threat. Um, so once again, yeah, seasoned players at this point. Jake kind of goes into how being on the outs was incredibly difficult um, and is difficult for anyone after a while, but he reiterates that, you know, I don't take this personally. It's it's just part of the game. And I'm just frustrated because I just imagine it going so much differently. And I think uh, I think the majority, the shocking majority of players that, I mean, only one person wins every season. I think almost every player would agree with him. Like, yeah, no, it's never like you think it is. Because I think a lot of the people who go on Survivor have probably been dreaming about it for a decent while, vividly imagining it and i i bet it almost never is very close to the image you had ever even if you do win and you imagined winning i bet it doesn't look anything like you thought everyone also is talking about how this is the most complicated vote by far in terms of figuring out where people truly stand what's actually going to happen and who you should even vote for so it, it also is another indicator that like things are moving a little faster now things are moving a little sleeker people are playing much harder they're seasoned players like i was saying before so the what it seems like is happening is the majority of the tribe is going to vote for bruce and then they're either going to deflect to julie or jake it seems like there might be some votes for both of those people but we're not sure you really couldn't get an idea before going in if it was going to be jake or julie uh, we go into the vote uh for whatever reason bruce does not play his idol I don't know how Emily pulled off that lie. I don't know why. I don't know what she was able to do to make Bruce forget that, like, everyone was talking about the Bruce problem openly at Tribal last episode. And it was pretty obvious that the second he, like I said, the second he didn't have protection, everyone was going to talk about voting for him, which they did and are. And here we are. And he doesn't play his idol. And I don't get it. And the vote, Jake gets three votes. Julie gets one vote. And Bruce gets four votes. And Bruce goes home. And I, I said last time the only way they can send Bruce home is if they massively blindside him. And one, Emily did it. So amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing for me uh and for, even even more amazing for emily obviously um but uh i thought that was a long shot i can't believe it i don't know i don't know um that blew my mind i it's wild to me ah, what a miscalculation man but um and this was not surprising to me at all bruce takes it really well you know he's like you know it was an honor to play with all of you i had a great time I, it was very classy which that didn't shock me at all he always seems like that kind of person to me uh very much aware that it's a game and this is just how you play um so yeah that was that was nice to see so yeah emily pulls off this massive move for her resume and as so long as she can convince the final jury 
if she makes it there. I don't know if she'll make it past top five. But uh, if, if she gets to the final jury and can convince them that that was her move and that, you know, demonstrate that or if there's proof of it in any way, that's massive because Bruce was a high priority target the entire mer- post merge situation. So, like, that'll it's huge brownie points for the jury team. Also, the, the jury obviously loved it. Like, Kelly, Caleb, and Kendra, yeah, they were all over that. They were like, let's go, dude. I can't believe Bruce got blindsided by that i i would really i'm i'm excited for the reunion i want to see what was going through his mind i feel like maybe there's things we don't know kendra and kelly both seem to have super strong feelings from the jury and it's giving me the vibes that like this final tribal might be kind of brutal it might be kind of spicy it might be a little bit more like the first tribal the, the first final tribal, if you know what I'm saying. Let the snake eat the rat. Like, <laughs> it's heating up, and I'm I'm wondering where it's going to go. Drew does not handle being targeted well or confrontation well. That was really gross. Uh, and if that doesn't get under control and any of that leaks out towards his alliance members, it's over for him because uh, you can't have someone that volatile and trust them like if he starts to think that austin or emily or d is planning against him or something and he brings that weird energy that he brought to jake to them they're just gonna all right well that that was weird let's get rid of him you know what i mean like he's rocking the boat so um not that i care because at this point i kind of want drew gone like that's crazy dude i like i know for whatever reason people it's a meme to kind of like shit on italians i get it Um, And I'm not Italian, not that I should have to be in order to be calling this out. Um, It just, I took note that when this person wanted to hurt another person, they immediately went to racially charged language. And that's gross to me. That's really gross. It's like when someone is wanting to like, they're like, oh, well, you know, they're like, they're like trying to talk trash on a content creator who maybe got canceled for some super valid reasons. So they start body shaming them in the middle of calling them out and like, yeah, okay. That's really cool, but aren't you against body shaming every other time of the year? But then when it's someone you don't like, you instantly go for the body shame. Like, what is that? That's not, that's not what this is about. Like, like you're, you're not supposed to do that. Like, ever. It doesn't matter if they're a bad person to you. That doesn't give you a green light to do gross things. <laughs> what? Also, I think Julie is so mind-numbingly focused on getting Jake out that she has, like, serious blinders on and she's... She's likely next, I think. I'm like, I'm if, if it's it's gonna be either um like Julie or maybe Jake, but I think Jake is probably gonna find a way out because I think the focus is just gonna shift elsewhere. Um, and depending on what happens with Drew's alliance, if something weird goes down there and he gets all weird, I think it could be him too because they just have a lot of numbers. Um, so if they just got like one other person to be like, hey, Drew's being weird, will you help us vote him out? They'd be like, yes, please. Uh, but that would that would kind of be their mistake to make the core four alliance so to speak so yeah that was this week's episode of survivor it was a little wild um i know it was a little ranty on a couple things there uh and i don't know i understand people might disagree with me if you have different thoughts i'd definitely willing to hear them out in the comments below obviously everyone's allowed to have their own perspective i tried to explain why i have the perspective i have on the issues i had you know with like the no contact thing and like the drew thing i don't know uh it is what it is uh if if you had any other thoughts about the episode or anything you know i i really like to get just a conversation about the episodes going in the comment section in general Uh, either way thanks again for watching these videos i'm really glad people seem to like them uh i know i said i was going to do doctor who videos but i think i'm gonna keep that one as just me because it means so much to me and taking notes about this is fun it's changed the way i watch survivor it truly has and i don't know if i want to see that same type of change in my doctor who viewing chip so yeah i don't think i'm gonna do for doctor who sorry about that but yeah thanks again for watching this video don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future videos as well as live streams where i do like challenge runs on gaming and stuff like that just goofy little things sometimes i clip them up in the videos too i think a mario video went up earlier this week yes earlier this week for when this goes up yeah um the first playthrough session of my one stat challenge for super mario rpg so if that sounds interesting to you you should click on my channel and check it out anyway uh that's all for me today and i will see you later warehouse catch you on the flippity flip i really like how i always wave like a cartoon character like i do it like 
you know, just big and over the top 